Hello, I'm Kendra Johnson, and this is my interview for the Aspiring School Leaders Fellowship in Nashville. Question one, what experiences have you had that have put you believe have put you on the path to school leadership? Two come to mind for me, one being my last year of teaching, um, the, the experience that really sort of lit the fire for me that school leadership was a path that I wanted to take. In our in our in my placement school, um, I was in my fourth year, so on my hallway, I was considered one of the veteran teachers. We had a lot of new teachers and a lot of teachers that were new to our school, and they were struggling. We all kind of struggled and had challenges, and I just wanted to help. And so I basically spent a lot of time after school um, working with new teachers on classroom management, um, strategies, really looking at um, Teach Like a Champion and practicing the techniques in that, that book. Um, I know I spent some of my planning period observing and giving feedback to new teachers because I just genuinely wanted to help and see them become better teachers. I didn't get you know any recognition from my principal. I, wasn't, I didn't have a role or a title, so it was very informal. But that experience in and of itself was so valuable to me because I really enjoyed kind of pouring into and investing in those teachers because I wanted to see them become better. The second experience is um, the master's program that I'm currently currently enrolled in at Vanderbilt. It's um, the Leadership and Organizational Performance Program. And in this program, we are studying leadership, both theory and practical application techniques that are applied mainly in the for-profit industry. And I think I have um, been exposed to a lot of leaders and organizations that have done things successfully. Um, and so what I'd like to do is figure out how to apply those skills and practices that these organizations have used in an educational setting. How can I create a school that runs like a successful organization? That's what I've been thinking through and, and what I hope, you know, participating in this fellowship will help me sort of refine the vision and, um, and, and create, um, become a school leader that can create an environment that um, teachers thrive in and really enjoy being a part of and kids receive the best education that they possibly deserve. Um, the second question asks, um, what are one to two strengths and what are one to two areas of growth? So um, this summer, I also participated in an internship as a part of this master's program. And in this internship, I reflected a lot upon my strengths and my areas for growth professionally. Um, as I, I took the Strengths Finder assessment, and two of my top themes uh, you know, were called strategic and restorative. And as I think about my role in the classroom, I think those two things are really at play, even though I didn't realize that that's what I was doing at the time, that I was utilizing those strengths. Being strategic means the way that I think and the way that I process information, I'm always thinking about the what ifs, the outcomes that will result if we take this decision and if we take that to make that decision, or how things will, will turn out before taking a, um, any action. And being restorative is more about really thriving on bringing life back to difficult situations, problem solving, wanting to, to you really, I, I like um, figuring out solutions and being solution oriented. Um, so those are my top two strengths. And in the classroom, I think, as I just explained, and being so helpful to teachers staying after school, those, those two strengths were at play most because I was trying to help them think about, well, what if a student does this? How do you, what's the result? Or if you create this procedure, what can happen? Or if you teach it this way, how might things turn out? Um, challenging teachers to think through those things and then also just helping them as they process through those things, really helping them find the solution that was best for them, not a solution that I gave them, but one that they created on their own. Um, so those are my top two strengths at play. Um, I would also say in this summer internship, I reflected upon my areas for growth and the greatest piece of feedback that I received um, was around one of our, our 
program competencies is called interpersonal savvy. And with that, it, it means being very skilled at building rapport and relationships with people at all levels of the organization, both internally and externally. So I know that as a person, I am friendly, but not really social. So, um, you know, I realized that with the career goal that I have, wanting to be a school leader, that's an area of growth that I really need to capitalize upon and, and really, really um, make adjustments to be to be stronger in. Um, what, it, what it looks like for me, if I'm in an environment with a lot of people that I don't know, I typically don't talk to anyone, which can't be good because, um, you know, how do you really build connections and relationships if you don't open up? I think what I've um, learned and what I'm trying to to do is intentionally place myself in situations where I have to come out of that comfort zone and be even though even if I'm uncomfortable, ask questions and really genuinely take an interest in getting to know people because I want to establish those relationships with people, um, become a better professional. And then, so the third question asks about um, underlying mindsets that support my strengths as well as mindsets that enable my areas for growth. And I think I've already mentioned the one that supports my strength. Um, I'm just, my nature is to be helpful. I really, uh, I have a personal value system that says to leave people better than they are when they first met you. So I always, even in my work, I want my colleagues and my, my teachers and, you know, classmates to really be better um, better thinkers, better teachers, better at whatever it is they do as a result of any interaction with me. And so um, I think that is the the mindset that kind of fuels my desire to problem solve and wanting to think about the possible outcomes before making a decision. And also, I think the mindset that enables my area for growth is not really... It's, it's more so the negative side of my strategic mind at work. I, I do think about the what ifs, but I typically, when thinking about interacting with people I don't know, I become afraid of the negative outcomes that could result. Well, what might happen? What might they say? And what if I can't think of anything else to say? And, you know, the conversation becomes boring to them. And how does that look? Thinking about, you know, processing all of those negative thoughts rather than looking at the opportunities that could result and the, you know, future relationships that could develop if I just step out and just ask questions and come prepared with questions in my mind <laughs> uh, until I get to that place where it's normal and it's comfortable for me to really engage people in a meaningful way. I think so those are that's the mindset that I've really been trying to challenge myself to overcome so that I do become better at relating to people um, interpersonally, especially in professional settings. And the last question says, um, what is what's an interpersonal? I'm sorry. What's the time you've successfully navigated a professional interpersonal conflict? What happened? What was the nature of the conflict and how did you resolve it? So the, the situation that is most clear in my mind is um, from my last year of teaching as well. I think I had a, I've gone into the, the year and I was the lead teacher for the seventh grade language arts team. And um, I had, being in my fourth year, I also had a veteran teacher on our team who uh, who had been at the school for a very long time and had much more experience in teaching. But he and I had different perspectives on how we were going to implement our content, how we were going to teach the curriculum that year. And my principal wanted us to use the Common Core curriculum maps and novels to do thematic based units. But this particular teacher had much success in the past using the textbook and teaching skill based units and he was very very adamant about wanting to stick with the textbook. Um, and I was very adamant about following through with what our principal desired and expected. 
So our first meeting of the school year, we get into this meeting and he and I basically proceed to argue with one another in front of our entire team of teachers, in front of the other grade levels, in front of the academic coaches and you know literary coaches basically he and I were just kind of going back and forth in our meeting and we didn't accomplish anything wasted hours of time um and left the meeting just just with things kind of up in the air that you know I was going to do what our principal expected and he wanted to do he was going to do whatever he wanted to do you know I'm as I you know I think back on it I'm not really proud of how things happen but um, after the meeting you know I, I just knew that I was right I knew that my principal was going to support my decision and you know kind of be okay with how things ended up because it wasn't my fault that's what I believed and I got an email from my principal and he you know almost kind of reprimanded me so he and I talked and I was just so confused because I knew that I was right and I was holding up his expectations. And to him, what he did was kind of push back against my my perspective and, and made me really reflect on my role and my contribution to the conflict. And as I thought about it, I really realized that going into the meeting, I had already established sort of a biased perspective of who this teacher was, who he was as a person, who he was as a te- what type of teacher he was, and how I was going to handle him before I had even had a chance to really work with him or interact with him, um, you know, that school year. So that biased perspective really kind of fueled um, my my behavior and my decision that day to speak to him and to you know handle him the way that I did and as I reflected upon it I felt really really bad about my decision and you know I quickly sent an email to apologize to our teammates apologize to the school the, the leaders that were there the other department members because I was really embarrassed <laughs> about how I had behaved and then I you know I reached out to the teacher asking if he and I could talk in private And when I sat down and actually listened to him, Mm. um, I realized that he and I both had things that we could offer one another where our areas of strength were in, in, um, in our areas of strength. So, you know, we came to a compromise where we would use the novels and the thematic based units, but he had a lot of knowledge of the textbooks and how we could use those things to remediate and enrich certain skills. And it really turned out to be a great professional relationship that he and I established um, he became one of the teachers that I depended upon most in that school year to really help in you know implementing ensuring that our curriculum was rigorous and aligned and, and it just it just turned out really really well I think because um, I was able to really reflect on my role and my contribution so as a result of that conflict I think now I'm at the place where I, that's how sort of my strategic theme um, was at work in me because now I'm always thinking about well if I do this this might happen and you know challenging my decisions and the the the, the ways in which I interact with people to make sure that I'm always doing the right thing and um, you know making sure that how I handle people is um, not fueled by any negative emotions or negative perspectives that might um, disrupt the continuity and the unity of of the relationship that I have with, with my colleagues. So this is my interview. Thank you so much for your time. I'm really excited about this opportunity, and I thank you for your highest consideration for this fellowship. Have a great day.